I had this awesome discussion. Now listen to this very carefully. I had this awesome discussion with my, my youngest daughter the other night, and she was asking me all kinds of questions until uh, well after midnight. She was asking me all the kind of questions about, you know, she'll be 20 years old in uh, May. And so she was asking me all kinds of questions about relationships, about marriage, about sex, uh, about abstinence, uh, and then we got on the subject of submission. And um, she had a lot of questions about submission. And she thought that it would be a great idea for me to address the subject, which I think I have in the past, but she thought it would be a great idea for me to address the subject from my you know, perspective, which I believe is a biblical perspective. A lot of people will disagree with me uh, I guess when they hear my perspective, because a lot of times uh, we use religion um, to subjugate, you know, segments of people. Black people have been subjugated by the misapplication of scripture to believe that our black skin is cursed. And a lot of us yet believe that. That was religion. That was not the word of God. That was religion twisting the word of God. And so likewise, I believe that the subject of submission, the wife's Submission has been twisted by religious minds to put psychological locks on generations of women. And I think men have taken the scripture uh, and twisted it to mean what they want it to mean. And uh, it has no real basis in the original intent of the revelation. Now, that's my view. A lot of, you know, a lot of men will not agree with it, but when she and I uh, got into our discussion about submission and what her view was or is and what she believes most young women's view is about submission, it, it kind of goes like this. Uh, you get married to a man, you do what he tells you to do, period. You get, okay, here it is again. Her view of what she thought, which is why she has, uh, you know, these, these bumpers up, her view, and she believes that most young women's view is that when the scripture says, wives submit to your husbands, that it means you get married to man, you do what he tells you to do, period. That ain't Bible. That is not, that is not. Okay, let, let's just think about it from a common sense perspective. Okay, let's think about it from a common sense perspective. God himself does not make us do anything. He gives us the power to choose. He gives us the power to make decisions and he's God, he's our father. No one has our best interests at heart more than God. He is, he's, he's, he's sovereign. And he does not make us do anything. He presents certain things and he gives us the power to choose whether we will do it or not. I then asked her relative to my relationship to her mother, which she has witnessed for nearly 20 years now. My marriage to her mother, she's witnessed for nearly 20 years now. She's 19 years old. I said, when, when did you, have you ever seen me tell your mother what to do? And she said, no, I've never seen you tell, tell my mom what to do. I have said to my wife, this is the way I see it. This is what I'd like to see happen. And because certain things are in place that we're going to discuss in a minute, my wife has been able to process what I've suggested and then submit to it willingly, not by force, but willingly based on a mutual connection and a mutual understanding. God does not tell you, just do what a man tells you to do. That man has to be a certain man and a proven man. All right, the Bible says in Colossians 3.18, 
Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands. There are a lot of you all who are submitting yourselves to people that are not, you're not even married to. You, they don't even have an intention to marry you. He says, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as it is fit in the Lord. As it is fit in the Lord. So number one, watch this. He needs to be a husband. And a husband has certain qualities. Now, I can't, I don't have time to get into all of that. But just because you went to the altar and got some paper doesn't mean you walked away with a husband. Because a husband is going to sacrifice for you. A husband is going to put you first. A husband will die for you. A husband will, will hurt himself before he ever hurts you. A husband will provide for you. A husband will guide and lead you spiritually. A husband will guard you. A husband will support your gifts and your abilities. A husband will give you a platform to expand your personal vision. That's what a husband does. So he says, wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as it is fit in the Lord. Now, some take that, that latter part of that verse, as it is fit in the Lord, to just block it down to it's, it's fit in the Lord. It is, it is the Lord's will for you to submit to your husband. I believe that. But I also believe when it says, as it is fit in the Lord, that it is also a challenge for you to discern whether or not this so-called husband of yours is guiding you in the direction that pleases God. Do you really believe that the father is going to give a command for you to submit or follow someone's guidance or someone's instruction that's leading you away from him? So God's going to tell you to listen to me, even if I'm directing you away from the father and then the father's going to judge me or judge you for listening to me when he told you to listen to me. It doesn't take a whole lot of theological savvy. It, it, it's just common sense that, that that doesn't add up. Well, let's go further. So a woman uh, well, submission rather does not give the man submission does not give the man a blank check of supremacy or superiority over the wife. And I think that's how it's been viewed. That when the Bible says to the woman, submit to your own husband, that it means that the woman somehow is a second class citizen and uh, your husband is superior to you. Not so, not so. I do not view myself as superior to my wife and the reason our marriage works is because I view my wife as an equal. When Adam looked at Eve, in fact, I was teaching this the other night. Um, the, first, the first thing that Adam did relative to humanity, now he had dealt with the plants and the animals and all of that. Before God gave him a wife, God put him to sleep, made woman, at uh, some point in time brought them together. And the first thing Adam does relative to humanity is that he affirms the woman. And he says, when he says to Eve, thou art woman, in essence, Adam was saying, you are my co-equal in dominion. The, fir the very first thing Adam does relative to humanity and relative to the woman is he affirms her as his co-equal in dominion. Woman, man with a womb, you are just like I am, except you have the capacity to give birth. It was not, I'm superior to you, you're inferior to me. It was, we are equals in dominion. But a, wo a woman only submits to a man that meets certain biblical criteria. If he's not a husband, husbands love your wives as Christ loved the church, meaning he has to be spiritual enough to discern and to know how Christ loved the church. If he's not a husband, there's really nothing to submit to. Now, the reason we struggle with submission is because we fail. Watch this. We struggle in submission. Women struggle in submission because most women fail in yoking properly. 
You struggle in submission when you fail to yoke properly. This is why 2 Corinthians 6 and 14 says, Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers, da 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 yada 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 An unequal yoke, watch this, is a, is a relationship that puts unnecessary pressure and pain on you in your natural um, constitution. In other words, you're tied to someone that challenges who you are fundamentally, and the connection is painful. So if you if you connect, uh, all right, if you have a yoke, yoke goes from this neck to the neck of another beast. If you have one beast that is uh, six feet tall and another beast that is four feet tall and you yoke them together, some somebody's neck, if not both of them, are going to get broken because it's unequal and it causes pain. And, and while, watch this, while the six foot tall beast is trying to move forward, the four foot tall beast is in such pain that he can't submit to the momentum of it because it's killing him. I don't know if y'all catching this here. We fail in being able to submit because we are not yoked properly. You're dating the wrong people. You, you, you're interested in the wrong people. A lot of you all have to go back and you have to revisit what you think you're attracted to. Because the reason you can't submit to the people you've seen or the people that have come through your life is because they have all been unequal yokes. The Bible says in Deuteronomy 22 and 10, thou shalt not plow with an ox and an ass. You got to make certain that you are entertaining people that are on your same frequency you have to make certain that you're entertaining people that are on your same level as a woman. Why would you entertain a man that's not on your same spiritual level? He's not on your same intellectual level. He doesn't have the same kind of vision. His vision is not uh, expansive enough for yours to fit into. Y'all on different pages, going in different directions, but because he find you want to marry the man. And then after you marry the man and all of the, all of the, you know, the, 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 the honeymoon stuff wears off. Now you realize that you in real life and now you got a man that you, you supposed to be submitting to, but he going in a different direction. His vision is too small for you to fit into. He's not on the same spiritual frequency. Uh, he doesn't want the same things you desire. And yet you've put yourself under his oversight. You got you, you, you to gotta, you gotta get to the point of understanding that your yoking is most important. When you find the right man that has the right vision and the right heart and is on the right spiritual frequency. See, y'all got to get away from haircuts and muscles and you got to really go to the internals of the man because that's where you find a husband. You don't find a husband in the barber chair. You don't find a husband in the gym. You find a husband in the internals of the man, in the soul of the man, in the, in the, in the, in the, what's the word? I'm, in, in, in the, in the constitution of the man, in, in, in the man's inner makings. There's another word I was searching for, but I couldn't find a character in the character of the man. But y'all don't think about character until you've married the muscles and the haircut. And now the man telling you to do stuff you don't want to do because he's on a whole different frequency from you. But yet you walk down the aisle and made all of these vows. Whereas you should have taken your time to make certain that you guys were equally yoked before you even brought it to that level of commitment. But now watch this. Number one, watch this, but he fine, huh? All right. <laughs> I can't read this to side. Was it Dr. Sonia? Watch this. Submission, submission is not automatic. Submission is not automatic. Submission, the submission of a woman is to always follow the honor of a man. In other words, the man is supposed to honor the woman, and it is the man that honors the woman, the husband that honors the woman, that qualifies for the woman to submit to him. You have a lot of men that are promoting submission who've not honored. 
And you have a lot of women that are trying to submit to a man that has not been mature enough to honor her. Mar even married a man that has not honored you. Bible says in 1 Peter 3 and 7, husbands dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of the grace of life that your prayers be not hindered. But it says, dwell with them according to knowledge and giving honor. To honor means to esteem to the highest degree. To esteem to the highest degree. And what I always say is, watch this. I have never told Lisa, do this. I mean, do this. You better do this. Never. You don't talk to no Jamaican woman like that. You better do this. I mean, do this. And I mean, do it. Now, I have said, Lee, this is the way I want to see it done, sweetie. I want to see it done like that. Will you do it like this? And sometimes she ain't like it. She said, okay, I'll, I'll do what you say. But I've never told my wife what to do. You know why my wife follows my instructions and my suggestions? It's because I've always honored her. I've never talked to her uh, in, in a crazy tone of voice. I've never, I've never cursed at my wife. I've never acted as though I was going to be aggressive towards my wife. I've always put my wife on a pedestal. I always seek my wife's opinion. Sometimes we disagree about how things are supposed to be done, but I listen to her perspective when she's right, which is a lot of times. I do it the way she says to do it. In fact, about it, I find myself listening to her many times more than she listens to me. So when I say, okay, babe, this is the way I'd like to see it done, she submits to that. Why? Because I have sufficiently honored her. And we have a brother cannot expect submission before he has esteemed or honored his wife. Watch this. Submission is the fruit of honor. You cannot get the fruit of submission until you've planted the seed of honor. Let that sink in. Let that soak in. So when you see my wife, my wife takes care of me, man. I mean, my wife takes care of me. But that is the fruit of honor. Her submission to me. Her loyalty to me. You know, that woman takes care of me, man. But it's because I, I constantly sowed the seeds of honor into my wife. And the seeds of honor from the man will always produce the fruit of submission. It's the natural response to honor. Because watch this. Submission that is forced is not submission at all. It is manipulation. It is manipulation. It's witchcraft. The day I have to walk in my house and force, twist my wife's arm behind her back to get her to submit to my oversight as husband, is the day that I'm really not a husband and it's not submission at all. It's manipulation. Number two, the intent of submission. Watch this. Now, now you got to catch this part right here. Why does God say to the wife, submit to your own husband? Why does God say to the husband, honor your wives? Because the intent of submission is for the woman to support the man's mission and vision for the family. When you go back to Genesis, God created man, the male man first, and God gave Adam everything pertaining to what um, he was to do, what mankind was to do. By the time God brought woman on the scene, the man had a complete vision and mission for existence. He had a purpose for being. Submission speaks of Watch this. So, so point number two, the intent of submission is not that the man is superior because he's not. We're co-equals. It is not that the man is superior, but the intent of submission is for the woman to support the man's mission and vision for the family. Submission, submission, sub, submarine, sub-zero. Submission speaks of getting beneath the man's mission, sub equals again beneath, and mission speaks of purpose. So submission is the woman getting beneath the man's purpose. 
God did not give Adam a woman until he had a clear purpose. Genesis 2.18, and the Lord God said, it's not good that the man should be alone. I will make him and help meet for him. But God did not say that until, watch this, Adam had a job, a purpose, a house, secure in his own identity. Then God said, it's not good for you to be alone. All of the other beasts, he made male and female together. He made male and female man separately because the man had to come first to get a clear vision and to have the capacity to accommodate a woman. And so when God brings Eve on the scene, he says, it's not good for you to be alone. I'm gonna make you a help meet, somebody that can help you dominate but if a man has no mission or vision, what does he need submission to? A man only needs the submission of a woman when he has a clear vision. And watch this. That vision, and I won't get ahead of myself, has to be big enough to accommodate his vision, the man's vision, has to be big enough to accommodate the woman's vision. The woman has to be wise enough to know that this man is on the same frequency as me and he has a vision that is large enough for my vision to fit into. So if I try to fit into his life, he's not going to strangle my vision. He's going to fertilize it. And while I'm helping his vision, our vision becomes, wow, Number three, and I'm done, submission also involves the man. Now listen to this. This is the part that's unpopular. Submission also involves the man submitting to his wife's strengths. We don't, we don't usually like to hear that. But any real leader, if you're a real leader of any group of people, you, you, the first thing you understand as a real leader is that you don't know everything. The second thing you understand is that there are people around you who know what you don't know. The third thing you have to understand is that uh, you're not diminished because you submit to another person's strengths. Well, a man's chief and primary partner in, in, in dominion is his wife. And, and a man that honors his wife also recognizes her strengths and her abilities, and he is not seeking to uh, blow her candle out. He's not seeking to strangle the life out of her vision, but he's, 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 a, he's a big enough man, he's a strong enough man to be able to say, okay, I don't know about this, but my wife does, and I will submit to her in this respect. She knows what to do with this, so babe, you run with that. Many families have run aground because men have tried to lead in directions or in areas that they had no expertise and they were sleeping next to women who knew exactly what to do. But because they were diminished in their own concept of their manhood, they were not able to recognize or respect or honor the gift that was in their wives. A woman should always, even in, in the process of dating, a woman should always pay very close attention to a man's low or how should I put it, to a man's esteem, a man's self-esteem. If a man has low self-esteem and he cannot respect the gifts that are in you, if he diminishes what God has given you, you, you don't need to go further with that. You need to leave that alone because a man that would be your husband that you can submit to has to be a man big enough to say, Bay, that's your area. Take it. I'm, you know, I'm falling back. Run with that. Watch this. In 2 Kings chapter 4, Verses 9 through 9 and 10, it says, and I don't know what people are saying. I know some people probably uh, <laughs> don't agree with what I'm saying. But, you know, while y'all sitting around here struggling and fighting, trying to make y'all wives submit, my wife supports me 1,000% because of the stuff I'm teaching right now. 
I ain't got to beat my chest and go in my house about submit to me. I don't have to get no, no pastor, bishop to talk to my wife to get her to submit to me. My wife submits to me because of the stuff I'm teaching right now. When you respect the woman as a co-equal in dominion, there's nothing that woman will not do for you. When you empower a woman's gifts, see, it be just because a woman marries you doesn't mean she's supposed to divorce herself. That's a t-shirt right there. To marry, to marry another is not to divorce yourself. A marriage is a merger where the two corporations come together and create something bigger than either of them would have been alone. You don't lose yourself to marry another. But watch this. Submission also, point number three, involves the man submitting to his wife's strength. strengths. In 2 Kings chapter 4, verses 9 and 10, listen to what the word of God says. And she said unto her husband, this is a wealthy woman. That, that, that fell in love with the prophet. And I mean, fell in love with his ministry. You know, don't go to the wrong direction with that. But she just, just discerned him. Look what the word says. And she said unto her husband, Behold now, I perceive that this is an holy man of God, which passeth by us continually. Let us make a little chamber, I pray thee, on the wall. Let's build him a room. And let us set for him there a bed and a table and a stool and a candlestick. And it shall be when he cometh to us that he shall turn in there. This is a powerful woman married to a rich man and says to her husband, Bay, I perceive that this is a man of God. Let's make a little, little room for him in our house. And her husband submitted and said, yeah, Bay, go and do what you got to do. And, and all through scripture, you see where there are, there are, there are strong men who have strong women and the women make suggestions and they they follow the suggestions of their wives sometimes good sometimes bad like in the case of adam wasn't so good but you do learn something even through adam listening to eve on the wrong point you learn that the original man had such respect for his woman that he listened to her opinion he probably shouldn't well he shouldn't have in that respect but you, you still learn the lesson through it. But here this woman is talking to her man, and her man says, baby, run with it. And because he submitted to his wife's uh, discernment of this man of God, later they had a child as a consequence of blessing the man of God. That same child uh, died years later, and the same prophet came back because of that covenant and raised that child from the dead. So... A husband that is deserving of being submitted to is also a man that respects his wife's positions and opinions. And he, 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 he brings a seat up to the table for her that they can have discussion. And he submits many times to her ideas and her desires. A wise woman does not submit herself to man that is too small for her strengths and capacity to fit into. And with that said, I'm done.